Hey riders, welcome to another video in our Adventure Motorcycle Training Series. I'm Eric Lang with Ride Adventures. I've been riding and guiding motorcycle trips and creating our touring and renting operations around the world since 2008 now. And in today's video, we're gonna talk through some crash avoidance tips for you and help keep you safe out there. So let's get in character. So like I said, I've been doing this for a long time, riding with individuals and groups around the world. And I've seen the mistakes other people make and made some myself. And whether it's for reasons of keeping your brand new motorcycle fit and in perfect shape or keeping yourself off the ground and avoiding the obvious pains and medical bills, let's, uh, let's talk through some of these tips and show you what I've learned. So the first tip I'll mention is to actually reconsider listening to music. I know, I get it. You got that perfect song or album in mind for your big trip coming up and you've got the, the whole song list ready to go. But there's also something to be said about being able to hear the ambient noises around you, you know, as cars come up from behind and the scenery and the canopy and everything changes. Also being able to hear what's going on with your engine and your motorcycle and detect if anything might be going wrong. Having that sound out of your ears and just having things natural might be a way to avoid crashes. And it's also a matter of adrenaline sometimes. I've seen those riders that are just absolutely piped up, Metallica pounding in their ears, and the adrenaline is going as well. And sometimes that can lead to a very early crash going off the road, hugging another rider too closely and not realizing that you let your emotions get carried away too much. So I get it if you want to listen to music, but maybe reconsider it when it comes to something as serious as motorcycle riding. Another suggestion I have might sound incredibly obvious, but maintain space around you. Simple as that. You do have the ability to control how far you are behind the, the vehicle in front of you. You also have the ability somewhat to control who's creeping up behind you, because you know what, if somebody's creeping up tight enough behind you and won't keep space between you and them, you slow down enough, eventually they will pass you. And the same goes for left and right. Maintain space around you, between other vehicles, Last minute decisions and moves don't have to be made that way. You give yourself ample time and it definitely helps riders keep themselves from crashing. Along those lines of maintaining space around you is to not let yourself get trapped up against the side of the road. So, like I said, sometimes you do need to let someone pass or they're just gonna pass you anyway. Maintain a safe position in that lane that you have and don't get yourself trapped up against the side because the side might be a curb, the side of the road could be a ditch, the side could have obstacles, rocks, boards, or something in there. And if all of a sudden you need to get out of that specific line that you're on and back over to the left, well again, if you've let a car come rushing up behind you and keep you pressed up against the side of the road, it is a recipe for disaster. So don't let yourself get trapped. Another easy way to avoid a crash is to stop worrying about what you look like. You know, we can't see who you are behind your riding gear and everything in any way. We have no idea be, who is behind that helmet. And so constantly being concerned about am I standing, am I looking cool, what do these people think of me, should I be doing some kind of a, a rooster tail, a power slide, a wheelie or a stoppy or something like that, is it really, okay, I get it, it's fun, but we don't know who you are anyway, and thinking about those types of things as opposed to actually executing what you're doing, which is riding and finishing safely, could make a difference in whether you keep it upright or not. So along those lines, the wheelies and the trick moves and the power slides and the roosts, is it really worth it? It's funny how sometimes when you're doing those things that show off, that's when you go down. So have fun if you're doing it, but really consider, is it worth it? Or is it gonna lead to the bike ending up on your leg or something like that? Next thing you know, you're not looking that cool because you're in the hospital. Another way to avoid crashes is by staying smooth. Smooth is the key with motorcycle racing, whether it's for successful completion of adventure rides or actually racing smooth. Not swacking on the throttle like that, not abruptly hitting the brakes or bouncing into turns and doing things that look cool or they feel cool and athletic or whatever. 
every movement that you're trying to make out there should be smooth. You don't need to be breaking traction, whether it's through acceleration or the action of actually breaking itself too. Smooth, keep your traction and everything calm. You also may want to consider having a pre-ride routine, sort of like other athletes have pre-game routines or golfers have pre-shot routines, something to get yourself into the right mindset and the train of thought that you want to be in. So if you're distracted and you've had a busy week and all these other things are going on, you know, do something that says in that final minute or two before you get on your motorcycle, you're going to walk through a routine physical process, something that you might do to clear the mechanism, so to speak, and make sure that your mind is in the right place at that moment, which is a place that's going to make sure you stay safe and upright and finish your ride safely. Another good idea is to make yourself visible. So you can do that by wearing bright colors or high-vis riding gear or having lots of stickers and lights and things like that on your bike. Or in the situation of, say, a straight highway section, don't allow yourself to just remain rigid in one line and stay straight without moving. Instead, maybe give your wheels a little wander from left to right every 10 seconds and move around. And don't be so stagnant that other drivers on the road might not notice you as, as, as much. And the flip side of that is to, while you're doing everything you can to remain visible, perhaps consider yourself or think of yourself as being invisible. Again, assuming that people can't see you and that you need to be ready to react if they don't. Along the lines of having a pre-ride routine, is bike maintenance part of that routine for you? So don't let low tire pressure that you didn't check be a factor when you're going through a turn and you roll a tire off the rim or finding out that your wheel bearings are bad once you're actually up and riding. So lots of things can go wrong with bikes. Don't forget that they're, they're vibrating machines themselves and the road is putting vibrations through them. Bolts can loosen up, nuts can back off. There's a lot that should be inspected and checked between each ride to help make sure that a simple bike maintenance issue isn't what causes a crash for you. Another one to consider is maybe reconsidering all this modern tech. So ABS and traction control, I don't doubt can play a role in keeping people safe. If you're not quite the rider that you will be someday yet, maybe you want to rely on those types of systems to sort of automate for you that which you don't quite yet have the feeling for. But riders can get to a point where you will actually be more in tune with what is going on with the bike and becoming a better rider by just not relying on those types of technologies and systems to do traction control for you. Instead, learning yourself to control the traction that you're putting down into the ground, learning how to work with your clutch and your throttle to put the right amount of power down and know what you can handle going through turns and things like that. So another point with this too is that when you have all these switchable traction controls and rally settings and dual sport and enduro modes and all these things, it's like that. If you're switching between them and you're constantly changing, now you've added more inconsistencies to what you are riding, maybe you can pull it off. I'm just saying that I don't like it, I don't suggest it, and I think it can lead to people having mistakes and crashes. On that topic of tech and gadgets and things like that, reconsider how many devices you're gonna lay out on your sort of dash area here before you. So between GPSs and smartphones, and maybe you've got a camera mounted that you're recording yourself with, all these different distractions can lead to, well, distractions that take you away from more important things ahead of you. And so along those lines, wherever you're gonna mount these things, hopefully have just one device instead of three or four, but don't mount them down so low that you have to take your eyes off the road ahead of you to look down and see it, you know. Hopefully your bike has an option like a bar like that where you can mount it up high and reduce the amount that you have to actually take your eyes away from the road ahead. Another thing you want to avoid is what's called target fixation. And this is a psychological principle that goes back through aeronautics and all sorts of different life situations. So when you are riding, you see an obstacle in the road, it could be a soda can, a rock, a log, whatever it is, don't allow yourself to be completely fixed and focused with your eyes on that target because ultimately you might end up targeting and hitting that. Instead, 
Train yourself, force yourself to immediately recognize it, but look away. Choose the path to the side of it that you wanna make sure your wheels are about to go over. It's still something I struggle with sometimes, but I can do it where I can usually pretty quickly see that rock and then remind myself real quick to let it become sort of a blurry image off to the side and instead focus on the actual line and the path that I wanna take my bike over. Another tip I can try to explain is what I call the 80% rule. So riding is fun and the faster you're going and the harder you're riding, of course, the more fun it may be. But there's something I have in my mind always about 80% and that is to never take a turn faster than sort of 80% of what I could be. To never accelerate harder or, or force myself to have to brake faster than 80% of my fastest possible braking. Uh, possibilities. So it's when you go from that 80 to 100% that all of a sudden you can get to that 100% line and maybe go a little bit over and have that crash. The way I have that number in my head, that 80% is that I'm staying safe. I'm giving myself a 20% buffer before hitting that 100 or 101%. And it's not as fun as 99, 100%, but 80% is pretty fun. And if you do that, if you keep your adrenaline in check and keep yourself under control, it can take you a long way on your motorcycle in this world. An idea I hope you've noticed by now is that you can actually use other vehicles to keep yourself safer. So this is particularly true when crossing through intersections or starting out from a stoplight or something like that. If you can just time it right or wait just a little bit longer to make sure that maybe that truck that's just ahead of you has pulled out and is now blocking the possible cross traffic, even if it's just coming from one direction. Using other vehicles as sort of barriers to help keep you from possibly being what might be the, the impact point of another vehicle is an easy way to stay safer. Last but not least, ride your own pace. Forget what the others you might have joined up with are doing. Forget how fast they are going. Ride how you feel comfortable. Don't worry about keeping up, especially for the fact that you want distance between yourselves as group riding anyway ride your own pace don't push it beyond what you're comfortable with and i promise it's the way the easiest way to make sure that you don't go down unnecessarily this is so cool so are there any other crash avoidance tips you have learned that i forgot to mention please let us know in the comments area below. Help other riders out, right? You can also help other riders, but just by sharing this video, get it out there in the community. Make sure other riders know the simple little mistakes that you can avoid by you know, knowing these simple tips and rules. So be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notifications button for future videos. And thanks for watching everyone, ride on. Baby, 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 oh. Baby, 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 oh. Hey, you wanna give me some space? No problem, sir, I'll be happy to. <laughs> okay, almost. I came in late. We're having fun. This is what fun is. That's right, this is adventure. Ow, that hurt. Oh, <laughs> this is adventure. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Owie. 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 <laughs> the sunset, too. Oh, no. Yeah.